Hello and welcome to HIPAA Essentials. This is HIPAA TV and a presentation of telehealth and HIPAA. A lot of times we see the terms telehealth and telemedicine interchanged. Telemedicine is when a referring physician and a consulting physician consult using electronic communications. Telehealth is what we're talking about today and that's when a patient and a licensed healthcare provider interact using these electronic communications. Telehealth as defined by the Department of Health and Human Services is the use of electronic information and telecommunications technologies to support and promote long distance clinical health care. It is a common misperception that HIPAA has been suspended during the COVID-19 crisis. In fact, the Office for Civil Rights, or OCR, wants you to know that HIPAA and other civil rights laws remain in effect. What the OCR has announced is a notification of enforcement discretion for the use of telehealth remote communications during this national emergency. Now, this relaxed enforcement still requires that you use good faith in the use of telehealth communications technologies. One of those good faith provisions is that you are using a service that is HIPAA compliant. Using a HIPAA compliant telehealth provider requires that you have a business associate agreement and you should always have business associate agreements before you start using a pro any provider. The OCR relaxed enforcement states that if you do not have a business associate agreement with this provider of your telehealth services, to get started, you don't need one. Uh, they'll overlook that. But this isn't something that can go on forever. When time is available to review and implement a business associate agreement, it should be implemented as quickly as possible. You should understand that telehealth is not only for COVID-19 cases. The Office for Civil Rights has relaxed enforcement for all use of telehealth when it comes to treating patients remotely. The good faith provision requires that you use a non-public facing telehealth service. Mgenix, Doxy.me, Apple FaceTime, Zoom, Skype. These are all examples of non-public facing telehealth providers that you can use public facing communication tools such as Facebook Live, Twitch, and TikTok should not be used to provide telehealth services. The only exemption here is when the patient has no other system that they can use to communicate with you. You must warn the patient of the risk and then the enforcement discretion will allow you to communicate with the patient using these methods. Good faith also requires that you are in a private setting where you can reduce uh, the incidental disclosure of that patient's patient information. If for whatever circumstances you cannot be in a private location during the telehealth service, then use reasonable precautions such as lowering your voice, not using the speakerphone, or recommending that the patient move to a reasonable distance from others while they're discussing their protected health information. Of course, it is bad faith uh, to use telehealth for any criminal acts or any further uses of the patient information. So say you recorded the transmission. Uh, you could not use that in training or other purposes as that would be a violation of the HIPAA rules and regulations. And of course, you cannot violate any state laws using telehealth. Now, should you have a seminar about the risk of COVID-19 or any other topic, you can use public facing uh, software that would allow you to do that. However, be very careful, especially if you have your patients attending, that you do not offer individualized patient advice during such a live stream. The enforcement discretion does not have an expiration date. The Office for Civil Rights has stated that they will issue a public notice when these provisions are no longer in effect. 
During the COVID-19 national emergency, we have seen an increase in Section 1557 and the American Disabilities Act enforcement by the OCR. They want to make sure that you understand that LEPs, limited English proficiency patients, have access to telehealth as well. So make sure you have provisions in place to provide language assistance services through telehealth. As always, even without this waiver, the HIPAA privacy rule, rule allows you to share patient information for treatment purposes, for public health activities, without the patient's authorization. HIPAA also allows you to notify persons such as caregivers, family members, and friends as necessary to help control the spread of the disease or who are at risk at contracting the disease from the patient. So you are allowed under HIPAA to notify family and friends if you feel there is a chance that they could contract the disease of the patient's positive status. We've had a few situations where employees come down with COVID-19 in your practice. They are not covered under HIPAA, but your professional responsibilities as an employer state that you must notify those who may have come into contact with that employee. Now, here you cannot identify the employee. Only tell the others that they were at risk of exposure without identifying the particular employee. And as always under HIPAA, it is never a good idea for you to disclose to the media any patient information without a signed authorization by the patient stating that you can give out that information. Good faith also means documenting some information on the telehealth visit. So first of all, document are you in a safe, secured area that will help protect the confidentiality of the patient information to be discussed. Two, do you have the patient chart available at the time of the telehealth visit? You should ask and document the following responses. Is the patient in a safe place that provides for confidentiality of the information that will be discussed? And if not, do you give permission for those in the area to overhear this medical information? You also want to know if the patient will be recording this telehealth visit. The good faith statements that should be given are to remind patients that they should disable or turn off Amazon Alexa, Google Home, or other smart devices as they have the ability to record conversations. It could accidentally be turned on and now this information could be recorded by one of these major companies. Also notify the patient that using the telehealth service could potentially introduce privacy risks. Some of the potential risks as stated by the Office for Civil Rights and their guidance are that information transmitted may not be sufficient to allow for appropriate medical decision making. Uh, there may be delays as there may be deficiencies or failures of the equipment. In rare circumstances, the security protocols could fail causing a breach of privacy of this medical information. And in rare cases, a lack of access to complete medical records may result in adverse drug interactions or allergic actions or other judgment errors. Always make sure to get a consent form signed by the patient. Uh, we have a full consent for telehealth services in our telehealth kit. My name is Michael McCoy. I am the owner of High Tech Compliance Associates. We appreciate you attending our training today. If you would like to get access to the full HIPAA telehealth kit, please give us a call. Thank you.